Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, uh, good afternoon again. Um, I st started to uh, write this paper um, about one year ago. Um, why I uh, did this research? Uh, largely because um, my realization that when China rises, it has to uh, answer two questions. One is that how will China use its uh, accumulated, newly gained power? Secondly, uh, what kind of international order China um, is pursuing as it rises? So um, as, a result, as a result of my research and also exchanges with my colleagues in China, um, I come up with a proposal that China should uh, construct a peace-oriented uh, power in its diplomacy. So what is peace-oriented power, he li in Chinese? Uh, basically, it refers to the ability of a nation to utilize its comprehensive strengths positively to promote peace, harmony, and cooperation in the international arena. So that is the, a very simple uh, definition. Uh, this concept has two major pillars. One pillar is rooted in the ancient Chinese culture, which is uh, featured by harmony and synergy. Um, it has both um, philosophical and um, um, also uh, cultural dimensions. Philosophically, the, uh, the concept of harmony and synergy uh, emphasizes coordination and complement Mentation among things. And culturally, uh, it refers to peace, harmony, integration, and cooperation. So that is one pillar which is basically rooted in the ancient Chinese culture. Another pillar of this power is basically rooted in China's understanding of today's world. For example, what kind of world uh, uh, we are facing today, uh, how countries should pursue their national interests, and finally, how to solve the uh, contradictions and disputes among uh, countries. Uh, what kind of world we are living today? I think the mainstream opinion in China is that this is a world of growing economic uh, integration and globalization, which creates more common interests. At the same time, we are facing more common challenges, which require nations to cooperate with each other. So because of this changing nature of this world today, we should work to create a community of shared uh, destiny and shared interests. So that's the uh, first question. What kind of world we are living now? Even though you also have some people believe that this is still very much a realist world, uh, but that's not the main, uh, mainstream opinion. Um, second question is how to pursue uh, uh, our respective national interests. Uh, first, we emphasize win-win results in uh, interest seeking. Um, in today's world, uh, which is featured by globalization and interdependence among nations, the interests of all countries are intertwined and integrated, and therefore they should not view interstate relations as a zero-sum game but need to pursue national interests through win-win cooperation. Only in this way could all countries inter interact in a friendly manner and ensure the sustainable development of each other's own interests. Uh, second, shared interests are emphasized to promote mutual interests. One should not focus only on the realization of his own interests, but should join others to increase the size of the pie so that everyone will have a bigger, larger piece of it. Um, third, the principle of seeking balanced interests should be followed. In the traditional realist international politics, balanced power is the principle. If you believe in balanced power, then you will think about countries. Uh, they are different uh, countries, whether they are strong or weak, uh, poor or rich. They are, bo they are born to be different. So major powers, uh, stronger powers, they should have a, a, a bigger a, a, a piece of the pie. But if you think about the balance of interests, then countries, no matter uh, poor or, or, or rich, big or small, 
their core national interest should be re uh, respected. So that is the answer to the second question, how countries should pursue their national interests. The third question is how to deal with contradiction among countries. Um, contradiction is a normal state of international relations today. Um, the, the question is how to deal with those issues. First of all, um, we should emphasize resolving um, differences through dialogue, consultation, and negotiation, rather than confrontation and settling disputes through peaceful means instead of using force. Uh, secondly, we also insist that the settlement of disputes should follow its natural course, and when conditions are not yet ripe, disputes should be shelved until the right time comes. Uh, no hurry in this sense. In addition, it also calls our nations to resolve their divergences in a tolerant manner. Uh, the best way to address contradiction is to find the equilibrium of interest for all countries concerned instead of seeking for complete victory of others, which requires both a sense of compromise and tolerance and creative thinking. So that is the, another pillar, how we you know, uh, 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 create the uh, uh, peace-oriented power. Um, as I already mentioned, um, peace-oriented power is uh, as a kind of new power, it has three components. The concept, um, the composition, and also the way of applying the power. Um, to understand this concept, in practical terms. Now let me turn to uh, um, the next part, which will deal with how um, each element of the peace-oriented power is, and also uh, how it is applied to international relations. Uh, first, the economic element of peace-oriented power. The economic element of peace-oriented power takes the form of economic interaction with the outside world. This interaction conforms to the general trend of globalization and regionalization and serves to advance globalization toward achieving balanced and universal benefits as well as win-win results, promotes the establishment of just and reasonable international institutions and rules, and push forward regional economic cooperation in an equal, mutually beneficial, and practical manner. External economic exchange should seek mutual benefits and win-win results again, rather than pursuing the maximization of one's own interests. And foreign aid, which is part of the external economic exchange, should aim at accelerating the economic and social development of the recipient countries, rather than being used as a tool to influence the internal affairs of the recipient recipients and obtain political influence over them. Um, second element, which is the diplomatic one. The diplomatic element of peace-oriented power calls for promoting trust and cultivating goodwill as well as expanding interstate connection, communication, and cooperation with other countries. Interactions between states should be based on sincerity and integrity and avoid playing double game, showing bad face, or sowing discord. When divergence, uh, divergences arise between two countries, diplomacy should function as a means of persuasion and negotiation instead of imposing pressures and making threats. Diplomacy should pursue the principle of non-interference of the internal affairs of other countries. However, in an era of globalization and mutually, uh, mutual interdependence, diplomacy should play the role of promoting peace and stability for the country beset in internal conflicts and turbulences. So in this regard, um, the principle of non-interference of inter international affairs should become more flexible given the changing nature of this world. The third element, the cultural element, the cultural element of uh, peace-oriented power refers to cultural exchange. While facilitating the exchange of various cultures, globalization may lead to expansion of the strong cultures and contradiction 
of the weak, weak ones. The external crutch exchange advocated by peace-oriented power is aimed at promoting the communication and understanding between different countries and different cultures, enriching the spiritual world of mankind and elevating the cultural attainment of various nations through learning from and complementing each other. While pursuing the trace of the times, cultural interaction should also respect the diversity of cultures and acknowledge the fact that diverse and colorful cultures are more helpful to meet the spiritual need of mankind than the simple one. The cultural element, again, um, refrains from exporting values and ideology through cultural exchanges, as well as seeking cultural hegemony. The next element is the security element. Um, the security element advocates settling international disputes through peaceful means and oppose, opposes using force at will. The essential attitude of peace-oriented power toward military force is it, does not, it, does, it doesn't oppose building a moderate defense force by a country, but opposes the practice of seeking excessive military advantage. It doesn't oppose using military force, but advocates the use of force should be strictly confined to the maintenance of one's core national interests, such as state sovereignty and territorial integrity, uh, self-defense, and also the uh, provision of public goods to the international community. Um, the last element is the international politics um, element. The international politics element um, implies that China should play a leadership role in world affairs in a responsible and constructive manner, which includes putting forward progressive ideas, setting agendas for common actions, providing public goods, and advancing international cooperation. Along with the rise of its comprehensive national strength, China has been playing and it will play an even greater leadership role in world economic and political affairs, which um, attests to multipolarization of international politics and demonstrates that China is already a responsible power. At the same time, China does not consider itself as the sole leader of the world and will never seek to monopolize the leadership of world affairs. Instead, China stands for collective leadership, that is, countries concerned should take the responsibilities together and cooperate in dealing with world affairs. In the meantime, China attaches importance to playing the international role in a multilateral approach with international mechanisms as a platform and international norms as the guiding principles, and will reform the incumbent mechanisms, create new ones, and reasonably adjust and modify the rules of game in line with the changing international uh, in situation. So uh, with that, let me conclude my uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat>